Alright, for this uh, video I'm going to use vine charcoal, which is basically uh, charcoal sticks made out of real wood. And uh, we're going to first tone the ground and then we'll erase the drawing uh, into it before we start putting any lines or any outlines. So basically we're going to be erasing areas of the light. So I have a reference image uh, in the upper right corner. I'm looking at the mirror right there. So it might be slightly different, but what I'll be focusing on is larger shapes. Larger shapes of light and larger shapes of shadow. But instead of outlining them, we're going to find them as big masses first. But first I need to uh, tone my drawing in here. I got the handle of the board over there going through, so I have to be careful. And uh, when you do this, try to make a fairly dark tone to start with. Uh, of course, if you're drawing something that's very light, then you might not need that. But uh, I am in a dark room, more or less, so the background behind me is appears to me even darker than what it is in a uh, picture. Uh, and I'm not trying to draw from a picture. I want to use what I actually see. And uh, what I see is that it is fairly dark. And there's also another thing that I know is that once I take my rag or a shimmy uh, to uh, smudge it, to get it a little bit more even toned, less textured, it's gonna appear even lighter than what it is now. So if you can see it, it gets a lot lighter. So I want to have plenty of charcoal on the paper to begin with. And uh, it doesn't matter how you apply it, you can go horizontal, vertical, or you can go in circles. Uh, we just want to get uniform amount of charcoal. And sometimes it's nice to have some really active uh, texture on the paper that you draw with. But I, at this point I just want to have a more uniform flat surface to begin my drawing on. And as I go over several times, it actually smudges itself um, on the surface too. I'm using bristle paper. Now, it might not be the best uh, paper to use. Uh, you know, drawing paper would work just as fine. You can experiment with uh, whatever paper you have. Now, from this point, I can try to give myself hints on where the figure is going to be. And, um, you know, looking at the photograph and myself, uh, it looks like the head would be somewhere in here. So it, I can give myself a reference or I can uh, do that by erasing and that's what I'm kind of more interested in and you can feel the uh, where you want to erase things because you can actually do it with your hand you can uh, feel the spaces and the masses so here's the background and uh, in here I want to have that sculpture I'm not going to include all of the little details in the lower corner, but I'm going to include the dark shape in there. Uh, so I can literally start thinking of where is that background white wall, which is not really white anymore, is going to be. There's a little strip over here, so maybe my head needed to be a little bit more off to the right. I need to have plenty of room for the neck in here and the face. So I gotta push the head over a little bit more. The shoulder um, is uh, lighter than the background over here. And, uh, I feel like I need to lift this up higher. And uh, I can uh, start uh, working with my eraser. A uh, kneaded eraser works really well. You can uh, uh, use it and then as it gets dirty you clean it up by uh, stretching it and mixing it in so it becomes clean again and it picks up a lot of charcoal. It's very nice with um, any charcoal medium. So I'm gonna look at uh, 
myself over here and think about, okay, I, I discovered that I want my head to be somewhere in this area. And the beauty of this uh, is that you're really close to the paper with your hands. You're not doing it with some stick like pencil. Um, and you can uh, literally find these larger shapes of light. It's almost like sculpting. So I have it uh, somewhere here. There's a nose somewhere there. Uh, I don't want to be too worried about making mistakes at this point. I'm still drawing and I'm thinking about the proportions. Here's the hoodie of my sweatshirt in here. And it's very painterly because we're really finding these kind of uh, shapes like planes or strokes. Um, and it uh, brings out these uh, um, parts of the form that are in the light. Here's the cheekbone. And uh, uh, the background now, I think it needs to stay fairly dark like this. So I already got uh, some complexity. I got uh, very light light. I got fairly dark shadow of the room, a little bit darker tones in here. But I can go back very easily now and just start finding some other masses. Like my beard is here is a little bit darker and goes diagonally like this. My hair is uh, definitely a darker shape, goes something like so. And it's quickly uh, starts to, the, you know, the, the image starts to emerge fairly quickly. I'm not doing any details, I'm not working with outlines, which is a, a big point, you know, not to be focusing on that. Uh, but I am getting drawing done that way, still. Uh, so we got the shadows of the sweatshirt in here, and then I got some dark masses of the cabinet. It really comes up fairly high up. In my picture, it's uh, a lot lower, and I'm going to do that uh, actually the way that it is in the picture. But I'm going to be looking at my image there. So here's... That dark cabinet. And the figure is a little bit darker than the background. So I'm going to just uh, create a silhouette for the figure. I'm going to say that it ends about here. That's the head. Kind of thinking about the gesture of the this body. some shadow behind it and so on. Uh, there's some objects in there and we can just describe them as masses. There's a little bit lighter object, darker object. So at this point it can be fairly loose but we're starting to get the proportions and general ideas of where things are. So now I can go in and start elaborating it a little bit more. Again, just drawing with with uh, this very loose wine charcoal medium and erasing the lights with the kneaded eraser. My eye socket can get a lot darker. And here is uh, ambient occlusion of a, of a sort because it goes in definitely ambient occlusion going around the eye socket and uh, uh, my iris is just a dark local color uh, my eyeballs wouldn't be quite so big so the eyelid is a lot lower I get an 
eye, something like that. Use my other iris. The uh, eye, eyeball is in a shadow too, so it wouldn't be quite so white. So light. My nose is going to be a little bit higher. Draw the nostril after I draw that whole bottom plane of the nose. Um, there's a little bit of light uh, above my whale's tail in here. There's bone above the bridge of the nose. The temple bones catch a little bit of light. Oh, I made it a little too low. It's very easy to rid of it with fine charcoal, I just smudge it. Their frontal lobes, they kind of catch a little bit of light. I'm gonna drag the shadow across this way. I can soften the edges very easily with fine charcoal. And now I'm gonna think about my hairline. It's not that high yet. So I can lower it. I make the hair a little bit more uniformed uh, tone. I don't see too much contrast in it, so I'm going to bring it together. I'm not necessarily drawing each hair at a, um, you know, in a, with the direction of the hair. I just can make it flat shape. The ear is diagonal this way. Fairly dark shape the neck over there so I can draw that ambient occlusion in there and I have a beard on the side of this face so it kind of sculpts my face and what do I see in the background there's some shape like this I'm gonna draw it in here just a little bit darker than the white of the wall beige board over there. Uh, my sweater is darker than my skin and the shot in the shadow you still see that contrast and everything as it goes down gets fairly dark. There is a white uh, uh, string in there that I can erase after. It in, but first, I'm gonna draw that shadow, the shadow under the hoodie, and the shadows behind my neck. Is it too low? Not bad. The shape of my beard, let me shape that face. The upper lip is a little bit more in a shadow, but it's mostly the uh, space between the lips. And I have more mass of the mustache here, and it's in the cast shadow of the nose. So I can make it a little bit darker, I can uh, bring the nostril a little bit darker here. Just gotta press down a little bit more. Now that I'm a little bit more sure about where I, I want to place things, I can go back and um, get more specific details. There's some hair behind there, uh, silhouetting uh, some parts like the forehead, the temple bone. So that contrast is really nice. Here, round. Everything below is in the shadow, so I want to make sure that it's different from uh, any middle tones. But the mouth barrel catches some light, so let me flatten this out and 
get a little bit of light on the mauve barrel of right here. But maybe it will not be uh, too light. I got to show the cast shadow right here. The neck is a little bit darker on the side right here. There's more ambient light is hitting the neck from this side. So just slight difference. Be nice to show. And uh, underneath the sternomastoid muscle here, there's a little bit of a, a crevice. And here, there's another crevice, a little bit more ambient occlusion. And here, inside of this space of the hoodie. Now, this whole hoodie is fairly dark in the front. find uh, the light specific shapes in here and, uh, probably not gonna be too light but I can make it look lighter by darkening the cast shadows around it and from the shoulder there's a shadow that goes down this way it's too much texture, you can knock it down very easily. Uh, there's some shadows on this side. And, uh, you know, I, I'm drawing my own frame so I can decide how low, how high I want to go. It's good to make those decisions in the beginning, but if you have a chance to crop it as you go, that's not a bad thing too. If you have like a larger paper and if you add more information, you can easily do that. Alright. I'm gonna make it a little bit clearer where my hair ends over here. And I, now I want to think about what I'm going to do in the background. In the background, things don't have to be quite so uh, distinct. So I can uh, make them a little bit more vague, but probably not uh, quite so vague as I have it right now. So again, with the finger, I can start uh, finding some details and uh, sculpt it. Can, uh, make a little sharper corners. There's a plastilina in there, so it looks more like a block. But one thing you want to avoid is making things in the background more contrasting and sharper than things that are in the back in the foreground, because it will bring it forward. By making it a little bit blurrier, it starts to look uh, like it's receding in space. I think her face is a little bit farther back. She has darker hair up in here. I want to make the wall appear as if it's flat. Even though there's some shadow and objects, I'm going to use uh, my artistic license to um, Take it out of the picture. Don't have to copy everything as it is. We, we do need to uh, interpret things and uh, make decisions. Got to show our personal perspective on things. Here's the little light figure. There's a little black shape. medium value shape. A little close to the edge right here. 
little composition. Some books. It's important to take care of every part of the picture, so it's um, has interest all throughout, not just in some areas. That's why I'm spending time on the some background or whatever I see in here. I actually want to finish it more at, the, at this edge. So it's kind of a quirky um, composition, but it gives me not just the portrait, but there's some other subject matter in there, and uh, that makes it uh, a little bit more than just a study of a face. You see uh, this eye right here, it looks a little bit odd still, so I'm going to correct it. I might work a little bit more on on, um, on this before I'm done with this drawing. And you can develop it as, as much as you can. The only, the only one more thing I wanted to add to this is that if uh, you feel like you could use a little bit more contrast. Wine charcoal only allows you to have so much of value uh, contrast. It doesn't go into black quite uh, quite so much. But if you use a charcoal pencil, regular charcoal pencil, you can go in there and um, hit some areas and they will get even darker than what wine charcoal uh, lets you do. But charcoal uh, Compressed charcoal doesn't erase quite so easily, so I would recommend you do it only at the end. And it is sharper tool, so you can uh, make things a little bit more specific too. So once you've figured out all of your proportions, then it's a good idea to uh, use your charcoal pencil. It doesn't smudge so easily as uh, vine charcoal, so it fixes things into place, and you can see how adds a lot more value contrast to this. Uh, where else do I need it? A lot of ambient occlusion areas. That's where I would throw in some really dark darks. I forgot to erase some of these light shapes in here, which would be quite fun to see. It's nice to have large and small shape variations. We started with large shapes and now we're adding these thinner shapes. And you can go back to your vine charcoal. I didn't mention that you might want to have variations of vine charcoal. So I have uh, hard vine charcoal and uh, medium. Uh, it's good to uh, use soft vine charcoal for large shapes. And then if you want to go back and uh, get the smaller details or hatch marks in there, you can use the harder vine charcoal and then 
lot easier. And uh, you can also use uh, your sand block. And if you sharpen it this way into the sandpaper, uh, get a wedge on it. Oh. Maybe not pressing so hard. Uh, get a wedge in there that's uh, more like this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. <laughs> but uh, uh, then use that flat side and it will stay sharp for a while and you can uh, create uh, cross hatching. It's a little bit awkward at first to use the vine charcoal. I always hold it by very end. So it's, uh, um, you know, it doesn't really uh, have too much pressure on it when I press down. It's more like tickling with uh, uh, a feather at the end of the feather. Or if you think of it as holding a blade and cutting the paper with a very edge of that blade. You want to be fairly light with it. And let's see what I can do with this. Start creating some crosshatch marks that describe more specific forms. Actually, it doesn't feel like a hard vine charcoal. This is in the shadow. So I'm gonna uh, work on this a little bit more, try to improve it, maybe uh, post an image of what it's gonna end up as. Uh, but I hope you got the idea of what the project is about. Uh, this is uh, darker tones than the skin tone, so I can make it a little bit darker. Create a sharper edge for the edge of the shoulder to bring that shoulder forward. But I don't want to have the outlines. I just want one tone to come up against the tone of the background. Right. So that's what I'm, I'd like to see for you to ex explore the large shapes. Start by uh, erasing things and finding the large um, lighter and darker values and then getting into improving these values uh, as you go. Alright, thank you.